Three journalists have been killed in the past week capturing the harrowing stories and images of the war in Ukraine. Brent Renault, a documentary filmmaker who had in the past worked for the New York Times, Pierre Zakshevsky, a cameraman for Fox News and a Ukrainian member of his crew, Alexandra Kushnova. Their deaths are heartbreaking losses and reminders of the dangers of covering conflicts from behind a camera. Marcus Yam is a photojournalist and foreign correspondent for the Los Angeles Times. He joins us now from Ukraine, Kiev, where he's on assignment. Marcus, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So I don't have to tell you, reporters and, and producers have been killed in covering wars too, but we can also sometimes stay back and try to take cover. That's that's harder for a photojournalist, isn't it? It's very hard to not bring this story in focus. It goes against every instinct we have to want to, in a way, bear witness. What had happened to Brent Renault and my friend Pierre, my dear, dear friend Pierre, uh, is a reminder to us all that despite the amount of experience that you have doing this work, sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes it's about really having bad luck and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. You were good friends with uh, Pierre Zakshevsky, I gather. Yeah, he was a good friend to me, and he was a very kind soul. Uh, he was a very giving person, and uh, he looked out for a lot of people that he considered friends. And even going into Ukraine, he gave me advice on security issues, on you know evacuation routes, and even, you know, so much so as to offer resources that were available to him to somebody that doesn't even work in his company. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of person he was. He was just a generous soul. What have um, the special challenges um, been about covering the conflict in Ukraine? I think one of the biggest challenges here is that the Russian forces are the vanguard of this war. In previous conflicts, um, let's, for example, in Iraq, uh, you know, coalition-led Iraqi forces were the vanguards of that war, and and the coverage was, you know, covering that war was different in that sense. And on this side, it felt like we were just sitting ducks half the time, waiting for artillery to land around us. Mm -hmm. And there's no way of telling that, is there? Exactly. Not until you hear the whistle, pause, boom. Yeah. Uh, I asked this question with great respect and having been friends with and befriended by many photographers in covering wars. Are photojournalists also at risk of being put out of work because everybody now has a camera in their cell phone? I don't believe so. I think the work we do is crucial. I think there is a place for citizen journalism, but the work we do is different because, A, I don't think citizens or anybody, any normal person, would want to walk willingly into a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. Nobody assumes that risk. Nobody wants to run into a besieged town to find stories, human stories, that could possibly humanize the world. We as, as photographers, as photojournalists, try our very, very best to capture human emotion. We try to do so, and, and Pierre knows this, and Pierre tries to do this in his work too, with a great amount of respect towards the people we face. I mean, we are, you know, at the end of the day, knocking at their doors at their worst possible moments. So... We have to be humble. Marcus, you're, um, you're in the middle of a war. You can't take off a weekend, can you? No. Every day becomes a routine. Every day we are out the door by a certain hour, and we stay out for you know 10 to 12 hours at a time or even more in different conflicts. But in Ukraine, we have a curfew, which limits our work time mm -hmm. in the field. I've been working nonstop since the day I arrived in Ukraine, I, I'm not sure when this is going to end. I pray it's going to end, not for me, but for both sides involved. I mean, it's painful to see the horrific scenes that you see, you know, the, the grizzled, mangled bodies of soldiers, the killing of civilians, the suffering of mothers uh, and fathers, and really the trauma of children. It's not yeah. something I want for anybody. What do you tell your family about why you do this work? 
I tell them, <laughs> I don't tell them much. I, <laughs> I just tell them to trust me and, and trust that I believe in the work that I do and this is what I have to do. I believe that I have a responsibility to our readers, but also that I feel like if I don't do this and if I don't apply myself this way, then it feels like it would be a disservice. You could quit as soon as possible and spend the rest of your life you know, taking pictures of kids riding ponies at birthday parties and still be famous. <laughs> I guess it's not about the fame. It's, this is not why we do it. I think I'm always drawn to human stories. I'm always drawn to universal human themes like love, connection, grief, empathy. And I think I get meaning out of that, the work that we do that way. Marcus Sham, a photojournalist with the Los Angeles Times. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care of yourself. Thank you.